This center section is the original part of the house. And in 1915, when Franklin did the renovation, he added the third floor and he added the two wings. Now, he added that third floor for his children. Uh, they're raising five kids in the house. So the third floor is all bedrooms, playrooms, nursery, schoolrooms for the kids. This wing over here, the upstairs, is the servants' quarters. Downstairs in the back are the kitchens. And then in the front, there's an office that Franklin used in the house. And you can go up on the front porch later and peek in the window if you want to see inside there. He had two important meetings with Churchill in that office. One was when they signed the Hyde Park Agreement, which was the agreement to continue to share information on the atomic bomb development. And then a later meeting they had in there about the United Nations. So then on this side of the house, the upstairs, we'll see the master bedroom suites. Downstairs, we'll see the family library and living room. And um, just to tell you a little bit about the redesign of the house, if you, if you think back, this is 1915, Franklin's 33 years old, he wants to be president one day. So he works with the architect, Francis Hoffman, to redesign the house, but again, he has his own design ideas. So if you look at this house and think about Washington and think that it may remind you of a house on Pennsylvania <laughs> Avenue, possibly. <laughs> that might not be totally coincidental, <laughs> we're not sure. However, um, one thing he did want to do is to make the house safe from fire. He did have a fear of fire. Um, there were lots of house fires back in those days. They'd lost the house at Mount Hope. Uh, one of his aunts was actually killed in a fire down at Algonac. So he had children in this house, so he wanted to make it as safe as he could. So he took the wood siding off and he put stucco on the exterior walls. And again, he used local stones for the wings. And inside, he put a couple of fire prevention devices in, and I'll show you those when we get inside. But just want to tell you how the house worked for him after polio. Now, if you see, there's a ramp there, but that was not his. That was added by the Park Service. When he was here, <clears> the <throat> car would pull up right to these little steps here, and the bars on those steps, he called them as monkey bars. <laughs> he would use those to pull himself up to get into the house. Now, that tells you he's got a lot of upper body strength, and that was something he worked on down at Warm Springs because he wanted to be as independent as possible, didn't want to be carried, wanted to be able to move himself around with his arms. And uh, another thing he worked on down at Warm Springs was a technique that would make it look as if he could walk because he knew if he were ever to go back into politics, he would not be elected if people thought of him as a handicapped or a disabled person. There was so much prejudice in those days about that. So he and a therapist down there came up with a technique that made it look as if he were actually walking. Um, he had braces on each of his legs. They weighed about seven pounds each, but they'd be locked in place. And then he'd use a cane with his right hand. Um, then you'll see photos of this. He's usually leaning on one of his son's arms. And with that support, he's able to throw his legs forward from the hip one at a time. Very slow, very laborious, but it did make it look as if he were walking. So if he had to deliver a speech, he could come from backstage to the lectern. And of course, the lecterns would always be bolted to the floor so he could support his full weight. But during a long speech, people who were there said you could actually see sweat coming down mm -hmm. his face. It was an effort. It was always very difficult, but he always tried to make it look easy. He tried to, he told his son, tell jokes as we move, just to distract people's attention from his own problems. And actually, most people at the time never realized he couldn't actually walk. They knew he'd had polio, but they always saw him moving. They just thought that he could walk. And he got the press not to take his photo when he was in motion or in his wheelchair. And for the most part, of course, contrary to what we'd see today, they really respected that. We only have a few photos of him in those positions. So um, he really wanted people to think of him as a strong and capable person who they could rely on during these difficult times. So inside the house, you're going to notice a couple of things. Um, when you go to the library entrance, you're going to be on a big viewing platform. Again, that is a park service ramp or platform. When he was here, um, if he was expecting a guest to a, a visit him who didn't know the extent of his disability, he would actually have a little portable ramp on those steps to the library. He would wheel himself in, and he'd transfer himself from his wheelchair into one of the chairs down by the fireplace but he had the wheelchair taken away and the ramp would be taken up before the guests would come in and see him already seated, which is what he would do in the White House for state dinners. He would be the first into the dining room. He'd seat himself, then the guests would come in. Again, so much prejudice against disabilities in those days. He really he was fighting against that, so he did try to conceal <coughs> the extent of his disability. 
So um, the other thing I want to mention about the house is his bedroom is on the second floor. And of course, he needs an elevator, but because of his fear of fire, he did not want an electric elevator. So he decided he would use the trunk lift that was in the house. Now, most of these big houses had a trunk lift for guest luggage. So he would wheel himself into this, and you'll see it when we get up to the second floor. Um, it is like a big dumbwaiter. It's a manual pull. He'd have to pull these ropes to move himself from floor to floor. Mm. Again, a lot of upper body strength, a lot of determination, and every day was difficult, but you know, he really wanted to be independent, so this is what he did. So, um, and of course, when you get up to the second floor, you'll see his bedroom is down at the far end of the house. There would have been a ramp. There's a little second set of stairs as you come out of the elevator. There would have been a permanent ramp on there. You'll see he's got an extra banister there to help himself pull himself up to those little steps. So, again, you know, you have to give him credit for every day was very difficult, and considering he was also doing everything else he was doing. I think he was pretty impressive. So um, I want to bring us on in now, and um, this is where I need to see your tickets. If you come by me